So coming to the herpes viruses. Now herpes viruses are included in the family. I'll write over here the family's name and that is herpes viridae. So herpes, herpes viruses are included in the family, herpes viridae. And this can be divided into you know, three subfamilies. The subfamilies are alpha herpes virinae, beta herpes virinae, and gamma herpes virinae. So the main family is herpes viridae, and the subfamilies are alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay, now morphologically, uh, if we are talking about uh, the herpes virus, it is, it is having a diameter of around 100 to 200 nanometer. Okay, and important one is about the genome. Genome is a double stranded DNA virus. Any kind of herpes virus, this will be having a double stranded DNA virus. Very important one. Now, coming to the alpha fam subfamily. So, al alpha herpes virinae. Now, we have three things under that. One is a human herpes virus 1, human herpes virus 2, and human herpes virus 3. Coming to the herpes, uh, human herpes viruses. Now, 1 and 2, we term it to be the human uh, herpes simplex virus. So, we have common name that is herpes simplex virus type 1 and herpes simplex virus type 2. Now, herpes simplex virus type 1 is usually associated with oral and ocular lesions. Remember this, ocular, oral and ocular lesions. So talking about you know specific disease conditions of oral and ocular lesions, uh, it can be acute gingivostomatitis, it can be uh, herpes labialis, then ke keratoconjunctivitis, eczema, hi, uh, herpet herpeticum, then it can be even encephalitis and even dendritic uh, keratitis. So these are the few disease conditions that can that uh, can be affected due to the herpes simplex virus type one. Now coming to herpes simplex virus type two, we are basically having a genital infections usually, which are the genital herpes. Uh, the location can be the site can be in the penis or the urethra, cervix, vulva, vagina, and even uh, a neonatal herpes as well as aseptic meningitis. So these are the few disease conditions which a patient can come up with if at all they are being affected with a herpes simplex virus type 1 as well as a herpes simplex virus type 2. Okay, now coming to the diagnosis of it. So coming to diagnosis, either we can take, a, you know, specimens. We can use a specimens like recycled fluid or a skin swab or saliva or a corneal scrapings or brain biopsy, even a CSF. See, I have not mentioned over here, I have mentioned only the very important ones which are being asked in your exams. So, the first one, what we can see is a direct, during a direct examination, a multinucleated giant cells with faceted nuclei and homogeneously stained ground glass chromatin, which is otherwise termed to be a shank cells. Shank cells. I repeat once again, multinucleated giant cells with faceted nuclei and homogeneously stained ground glass chromatin. The term is Zang cells. Apart from that, we can get a Cordry type A intranuclear inclusion bodies. Okay, that will be seen in uh, Gimsa stain smears. And then we have our Lipschitz bodies also. Lipschitz bodies, very specific for purpose. Next one is a virus-specific IgM antibody, immunoglobulin M antibody. So these are the ones which you can see in, or uh, how do we diagnose in herpes simplex, type 1 and type 2. Next one, coming to the varizola zoster virus, that is nothing but a human herpes virus 3. Now coming to the disease conditions which, are, which they cause, that is chickenpox and herpes zoster. Chickenpox and herpes zoster. Now, talking about chickenpox and herpes zoster, we know that chickenpox follows the primary infection in a non immune individual. But whereas the herpes zoster is a reactivation of the latent virus when the immunity falls to ineffective level. 
Okay. Thus, uh, sometimes what happens is a contact with either a chicken pox or a zoster may lead only to chicken pox, but not the herpes zoster. Okay. This was a slight information, but coming to the diagnosis part, uh, during a direct microscopy, we can do a tulidin staining, a tulidin blue staining, or a jimsa staining. Apart from that, virus uh, specific immunoglobulin M antibody, that's a specific antibody that can be detected by ELISA. Now, apart from that, even a virus isolation can be done. A virus isolation can be done between human fibroblast cells. Okay, so next one is a subfamily beta. Under the subfamily beta, we have human herpes virus 5, and that is cytomegalovirus. Cytomegalovirus. Now, cytomegalovirus infections are almost, you know, uh, always inapparent. They lead to prolonged latency with occasional reactivation. Okay. Now, here we already saw a primary infection and the reactivation in uh, chickenpox and the herpes. But here, only occasional reactivation happens, and only usually the usually there'll be a prolonged latency stage. So, an individual infected with the uh, Cytomegalovirus carries the viruses for lifelong. Now, coming to the condition or disease condition it can cause, uh, it can lead to retinitis, colitis, pneumonitis, as well as encephalitis. And one more thing, cytomegalovirus can be transmitted transplacently from a mother with a latent infection to the fetus. Okay, so transplacently it has been <coughs> transmitted. Now, coming to the diagnosis part. Now, uh, specimen with the help of specimens also it can be diagnosed, but the most important one are owl's eye. If you can see, I have an owl's eye. Uh, they are nothing but the enlarged cells with large intranuclear appearances. And that's why we call it to be your owl's eye. Okay. And the inclusions that are cytomegalic cells. This can be demonstrated usually in the centrifuge deposits from the urine and the saliva. And apart from that, serologically, cytomegalovirus specific immunoglobulin M can be detected in serum ELISA. This is important. Owl's eye, very important one. Coming to the last one, that is a <clears throat> gamma, in which herpes, human herpes virus 4, and that is Epstein Barr virus. Okay, I'll be now dealing with a 6, 7, and 8. Okay, so herpes, uh, human herpes virus 4. The common name is Epstein-Barr virus. Now, talking about Epstein-Barr virus, we already know that they have an affinity for lymphoid tissues. They have an affinity towards lymphoid tissues. And Epstein-Barr viruses are infected B lymphocytes. You know, in a, the infected B lymphocytes are transformed in such a way that they multiple, multiply continuously. And these cells contain many Epstein-Barr virus genomes. So coming to what it causes, it usually causes infectious mononucleosis and also some kind of associated malignancies also can come up with. They are Burkitt's lymphoma. Burkitt's lymphoma are nothing but the malignant neoplasms of the B lymphocytes. And that usually occurs in Africa and uh, New Guinea. So coming to lastly, we have mesopharyngeal carcinoma. And usually it is... Uh, it is found in the males of Chinese origin. Okay, so that was about Epstein-Barr virus, uh, the disease conditions. Now coming to the diagnosis part. So coming to diagnosis, we check for a WBC count, and we have seen that uh, the atypical, you know, lymphocytosis can be predominant. So lim uh, not lympho, sorry, leukocytosis can be predominant. <clears throat> Next one, we have a Paul Bernal test. Now, during infectious mononucleosis, during infectious mononucleosis, uh, some heterophile antibodies appear in the serum of the patient. These are the IgM antibodies elicited by the Epstein-Barr virus infections. So that is the Paul Bernal's test. So next one, we have Epstein-Barr virus specific antibody. Okay. So these are specific antibodies against the Epstein-Barr virus viral capsid antigen. Okay. And they can be demonstrated by indirect immunofluorescence or ELISA. 
So next one, coming to the nucleic acid hybridization, very important one. This is the most sensitive method, the most sensitive method for detection of Epstein-Barr virus in patient material. And lastly, we have virus isolation, and that is from the saliva or the throat, or throat washings. And even the peripheral blood cells can be inoculated onto lymphocytes. And if the specimen contains uh, Epstein-Barr virus, it produces a lymphoblastoid cell line. Okay, so this was in short about herpes virus.